Welcome everybody to another Village Torah Torah portion discussion. We are now in Parashat Naso. This is the second Torah portion in the book of Numbers and Sefer B'Midbar. And it's interesting. There is a lot. First of all, this entire book of, of Numbers has a lot of fascinating things going on. And this week's Torah portion also has a number of things we could discuss. I actually want to focus on one particular uh, section that's included, and that is something that is known as the priestly blessing. This priestly blessing is, as we will see, composed of three verses. Now, you know what? Might as well just go into it. Here we go. In, we have in chapter six in the book of Numbers, we have the Lord tells Moses, he's, or speaks to Moses, and he says, speak to Aaron and his sons. Thus shall you bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them. Now, here's the first of the three lines. It's three words. The Lord blesses you or shall bless you and protect you. The second line is five words. The Lord shall deal kindly and graciously with you. Although actually more literally, may God's face light up to you or shine to you and deal graciously with you. And then we have a seven, seven uh, word uh, line. So we had three, five, and now seven, okay? Which is, Yisa Aronoi Panav Alecha V'yasin Lecha Shalom. That the Lord shall lift up his face to you and shall place peace upon you, okay? Uh, so that, those three lines, these three lines, the three word line, the five word line, the seven word line, these are the, this is a three part blessing that, the Lord is telling Moses to tell Aaron and his sons what they should bless the people of Israel with or the children of Israel with. And then it concludes, Vasamo es shmi al b'nei Yisrael v'ania avarche. And thus shall they shall link my name with the people of Israel or, or they shall place my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Okay, so somehow with Aaron and his sons blessing the children of Israel with this blessing, that then God's name will be placed upon the children of Israel and thereby bless them. So basically, the this really seems that it's really talking about, this is the way that through through this priestly blessing, we're, we're calling it a priestly blessing because Aaron and his sons are the priests. They are in Hebrew known as Kohanim, priests. And so they are executing this blessing such that it's a it's a connection, right? It's a connection between God and the children of Israel, and um, and it's it's a nice nexus, as it were, uh, going on between them. So, uh, just a few words about uh, the priestly blessing. Now, the priestly blessing is something that, in Jewish tradition, is regarded as uh, a mitzvah. It is a it is a commandment that priests, the kohanim, are supposed to bless the people with, and so. Back in, back in, uh, back, 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 it used to be done every day in the temple. And the Kohanim, the, the priests would go up and they would bless every single day. And uh, they would bless the Jewish people with these three lines. Now, uh, since the destruction of the temple, we obviously don't have access to that. So we don't do that. Although the blessing is still done in, uh, I will say in Jerusalem, it's done on it's still a daily basis, even though we are currently without a temple. And then we, um, in the diaspora, actually, so we live in the diaspora, we are living outside of the land of Israel, and there is a practice that even though we don't do it on a daily basis, we don't even do it on a uh, basis of doing it every Shabbat, but we have a practice of doing it on holidays. So it's funny because I, I myself am a Kohen, I am a priest, that is my uh, heritage, that is my lineage. I D you know, just this week, we had the holiday of Shavuot, or Shavuos, if you prefer to, to pronounce it that way. So the holiday of Shavuos, I, on Monday and on Tuesday in Shul, in synagogue, I performed the priestly blessing. I said these three lines. Uh, the way it's done, actually, is, at least nowadays, is uh, the Chazan will say one word at a time. One word, and then the if there's one Kohen, like <laughs> in my situation, I was the only Kohen both days, uh, I would, 
or the Kohen would then repeat the word uh, to the entire congregation and do it every single word. So the three words, the five words, the seven words, so all 15 words, doing it one at a time. If there, and then if there are multiple Kohanim, which is what I'm used to, then usually you'll have all the Kohanim, all the priests at any given synagogue, then blessing this blessing, all 15 words, word by word. So it'll be uh, the Chazan would say a word, and then the priests or priests would then repeat to the broader congregation, also while holding one's hands. Uh, if you've ever seen Star Trek, the original Star Trek with Leonard Nimoy, uh, so the, the reason, <laughs> it's, in, it's actually interesting, Leonard Nimoy held his hands like this, right? He would say, uh, live long and prosper. That was uh, the Vulcan motto, uh, I guess the, the special slogan, live long and prosper. And he would hold his hands like this. Well, why did he, where did he get this from? Why did he hold his hands this way? He didn't get it from Star Trek. He didn't get it from Gene Roddenberry. He actually got it from synagogue. <laughs> he was used to seeing the priest, the Kohanim, and, you know, this blessing, this sort of, this Vulcan blessing of live long and prosper and holding it like this. Well, he actually got it from this priestly blessing. He got it. Um, so this is an influence on Star Trek from the Jewish tradition. And so this, this Vulcan blessing, the Vulcan blessing of live long and prosper, he would do this because that's the Jewish tradition. Leonard Nimoy himself is, is, is a Jew. Uh, was I think he passed away, but he was a Jew and he had seen this. And this is the way he was used to giving blessings. And so the way it's done is we do put both uh, hands together like this and uh, hold our arms out to the, the the Jews in the pews, like at synagogue. So that's how the, the priests, the Kohanim do it. And so that's, uh, if you ever wondered, where did the Vulcan blessing on Star Trek originate? How did Leonard Nimoy get it? He got it from Scholl. Um, so he actually, he got the Vulcan blessing from the priestly blessing. Now, uh, this is done. This so it's 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 a practice that we see continue even to this day. I just did it this week as a as a priest myself as a kohen, and um, so that's lovely, right? Lovely blessings. When we go back and we look at the words, they're pretty nice, right? Uh, the Lord shall bless you and protect you. The Lord, may the Lord, uh, may the Lord's face light up to you and deal graciously with you, and may the Lord uh, lift up his face towards you and place peace upon you. Now, this is all lovely. This is great. The question is, what does it really mean? Like, what are they? Are these words similar? Are they different? What's going on here? Now, we could go in lots of different directions and trying to understand, explain it. One direction I'm that caught my eye and I wanted to share with you, I've mentioned previously uh, the, the what's called midrash. Now, midrash literally means sort of, um, I don't know, I, I don't know, expanding kind of like midrash is to sort of inquire. But I, I previously described it as rabbinic narrative expansion. Now, that works for narrative, right? Narrative expansion with sort of other stories that sort of color in, uh, sort of fill in the lines, as it were. Here, we don't have a narrative, we have a blessing, three-part blessing. So in this early Midrash, it's from the Sifre, this early Midrash from about the second, maybe third century of the Common Era, they try to figure out what do each of these terms mean? What, what's really, what maybe digging a little bit under the surface, uh, words are lovely, the words are nice. What do they mean? So here we go. We're going to go into a little bit of this uh, rabbinic Midrash when it comes to trying to understand what this priestly blessing is. So, you know, starting off with the first two words, Yivarechachadonoi, may the Lord bless you. So what is what is that? So with possessions, okay? It says with your possessions. So may the Lord protect your possession. Uh, I'm sorry, bless you. May, may your possessions be blessed, probably increase and keep you. Okay, what is this guarding you? Vishmarecha, what is this protecting you or guarding you? Also with possessions, may he, uh, I think, understanding Yiva Rechacha as an increased aspect in Yavishmarecha, uh, the, the guarding is sort of protecting your assets and, and specifically belongings. Anything that does not have to do with real estate and you no know, land stuff, just movable objects. Uh, but like uh, any good Jewish conversation, multiple opinions. 
we also now have Rabbi Nathan. He says, when it says, may he bless you, well, that has to do with possessions. Okay, so we have some agreement there. It's, it's talking about possessions. May your possessions increase and guard you from uh, and keep you in body. Okay, what is the guarding? No, no, no. The, the blessing is for your your uh, your possessions, sort of your movable possessions and guarding you is guard your body, that protect your body. We're not done. That's not, <laughs> these aren't the only opinions. Rabbi Isaac, Rabbi Yitzchak here says, what is this? And keep you. So it's presumably the blessing he agrees, the blessing is with these movable possessions, but guard you is from the evil inclination. So guarding you from the evil inclination as it is. Okay. So uh, that's, that's not the only one. <laughs> we still have other opinions. We also have another one is, and keep you, what is the guarding you from Maziki, from these destructive agents? Okay, from guarding you from destructive agents. Another one, what does this mean to guard you? Keep you for the covenant of your fathers. Another one, guard you, keep you for the end, the time of redemption. And all these seem to have biblical uh, support verses. And then we have another one. And keep you. What is another understanding of keeping you? Keeping your soul at the time of death. Okay. And guess what? We still have two more. Uh, what is this guarding you? Which, you know, it's fascinating because so far, nobody disagrees that the blessing, the blessing orientation, when, when it says, may God bless you, that's your property. That's your, your, your movable items that you should be blessed. And nobody disagrees with that. The real disagreement here, at least amongst all these different opinions, has to do with guarding. What is supposed? What is God supposed to guard you with? Right? We talked about your uh, possessions. We talked about your body. We talked about maybe it has to do from the evil inclination. Uh, we're now talking about the end of life and keep you. Keep your feet from Gehinom. Uh, and then finally, and keep you. He will keep you in the world to come. Olam Hapa. So all these different things, that these early rabbis all agreed that the blessing what does this mean for God to bless you? It actually means your your items and then protecting you, whether it's protecting your items, protecting your body, protecting your soul, protecting your from your evil inclination, all these different things. Okay. Lots of lovely different interpretations, understandings of what this means. Now, now we move on to the second line. Now, this line has five words, that make God shine his countenance or shine his face upon you. So he will give you light of the eyes. Now, Rabbi Nathan, we heard from Rabbi Nathan in the previous piece. He says this refers to the light of the Shekhinah or the divine presence. And we, he uses a verse from Isaiah to, uh, to bolster his claim. Uh, another opinion is, uh, what does this mean? It means the light of the Torah. So what light is there? Meaning what light when it says light, the, light of the face? This is the light of the Torah. That's the type of light. Another one is let him grant your you grace in the eyes of man. Um, okay. And then we have, and be gracious to you, right? Uh, what is this being gracious to you? With understanding, insight, musar, and wisdom. That's lovely. What is it? Um, that is really lovely, actually. Okay. Then we also have, and be gracious to you in Torah study. May God be gracious in, with you in Torah study. And all these are bolstered by biblical verses we also have be gracious to you with gifts of grace as is written in psalms behold as the eyes of servants to their masters and so forth uh so lovely all these pieces of grace what does this mean gifts of grace uh with understanding insight musar wisdom that so you have these different things i'm trying to uh you know but das of avino of a of a musar of a i like that one and it's actually five different things in that one. I'm not sure where, why five, why not just one thing? The That first one, as far as what does this mean to be gracious to you with knowledge, with discernment, with understanding, with uh, Musa, I think, uh, personal character refinements and also wisdom. So, of course, we have Talmud Torah, the study of Torah. We also have Matat Chinam with uh, just uh, sort of being a, a gift of grace gifts of grace and then uh yeah so this is lovely i mean when we think about this the the, the shining shining one's light or shining the light the uh, god's countenance to shine upon you whether it's light of the eyes light of the divine presence 
light of uh, the Torah, as it were. Very lovely, because they, they're trying to understand. These rabbis here are trying to understand what does it mean? Uh, but how does God shine his light? I mean, we have a lot of light coming through <laughs> the window here in my office, but how does how does he shine through? There's different things that we see other reference to light shining. And then being graceful. Grace is nice, but what's the referent? What's the context? And it could be these five different things of understanding insight, musar, and wisdom, but it could also be Torah study. It could be other gifts of grace. Okay. Now, finally, we get to the final line, the seven word line. And what is this? Uh, what is going on? Now we have another one. That may God lift up his face to you. But this is the second face reference in the previous line. We had the reference to God, God's face shining to you. And now we have God lifting up his face to you. Uh, and the, we do have a scriptural piece from Genesis as far as uh, when you stand in prayer, when you are praying. So may when you pray that God will lift up his face to you. Wonderful. Uh, we also have uh, another one is before the decree has been sealed, but then after one, oh, okay. Uh, and then after the decree has been sealed, who, okay, lovely. We have all these different verses. The rabbis are trying to figure these out. They're trying to reconcile all these different verses that may possibly contradict each other. Uh, really fascinating, really neat. I'm not going to get into the, the nitty gritty with these. Uh, just trying to figure all these out. And then we get to, okay, what does it mean to Lord lift his countenance? Let him remove his anger from you. Okay, that's nice. Me, when God's face lifts up to you, that means he's not angry, not angry from you or, or removing his anger from you. And then we also have, what does this mean? And grant you peace. V'yasim l'cha shalom. The final three words, v'yasim l'cha shalom, uh, which is grant you peace. Now, this is peace in your coming in and peace in your going out and peace with everybody. Peace left, right, and everywhere. Okay. We have, uh, it's not the only opinion. Rabbi Hanina here. Rabbi Hanina says, uh, the adjutant high priest, the Sagan HaKohanim, he says, what does this mean to grant you peace in your house? So this is actually interesting. We have one, one understanding of granting you peace is peace in your coming in, peace in your going out, peace with everybody. So just basically everywhere, all places. But he says, no, 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 just in your house. That's uh, as opposed to everywhere with everybody in all your directions. He says, just in your house. Uh, Rabbi Nathan we get to hear from Rabbi Nathan again. He says, this is the peace of the Davidic kingdom. Uh, and we have, and he uses a biblical verse to bolster his opinion once again. Another opinion, this is the peace of Torah. Rabbis love their Torah. They love using uh, Torah to be part of this priestly blessing. So that's another one. And they use a verse from Psalms uh, to support that. Uh, we also have Rabbi Elazar who says, great is peace. Okay. Uh, these lovely things about how good peace is and so forth which is wonderful, which, you know, look, it's the final word of this 15 word blessing. So these rabbis talk about how great peace is. Rabbi Elazar says, great is peace, the prophets having exhorted all men for its sake. Rabbi Shimon, son of Chalafta says, great is peace, it being the only vessel which contains all of the blessings, as it being written, the Lord gives strength to his people. Okay. Rabbi Elazar HaKapar says, great is peace, all the blessings being sealed with peace. So, this as he's saying this is the final word the 15th and final word of this entire blessing it's the seal it's the closer this is it's being left at the end saving almost the best for last as the seal rabbi elazar the son of rabbi elazar Kapar, says greatest peace for even if the idolaters live in peace the holy one as it were does not touch them okay it's an interesting one we have even more Great is peace for even the dead need peace. I don't know who says that. Great is peace, which is given to the penitent. The peace is really big. It was given to the lovers of Torah, uh, doers of righteousness, uh, 
greatest peace, as Rabbi Hanina, the adjutant high priest says, greatest peace, which is over and against the entire creation, greatest peace, which is needed even by the celestial creations. So, so that is peace. Peace, 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 peace. Now, clearly, it's fascinating when we read these through the lens, through this rabbinic midrash, this early rabbinic midrash, that we get the sense that these first three words, that may the God, may the Lord bless you and grant and uh, uh, and guard you, Bishmarecha. What does this mean? Well, the rabbis actually, strangely enough, do agree that Yivarechacha is blessing you with items, but Bishmarecha, the guarding could be your items, your body, uh, you, perhaps your soul at the end of the days. Lots of different op options there. The second one, um, uh, Yisa Adonai Panavalecha. I'm sorry, Yair Adonai Panavalecha Yuchonecha. That what does this mean to uh, light up God's face to you? It could be different things. Definitely um, whatever light is, but it's definitely a positive thing. Dihuneka, showing grace to you, dealing graciously with you, a bunch of things, including various intellectual things, right? Giving you intellectual graces, right? We saw with the Chachma, Uvina, Bahaskel, that, those five pieces, as well as, it's funny, Torah study. You get to see Torah study there, and then we get to see Torah study again, once again, pop up in the final line of the blessing. Uh, there are many opinions here. What does this mean? God lifting up his face. One, one opinion we saw had to do with turning his anger away from you. Okay, so lifting up his face is, uh, is that. And then, and that's really a big one, giving you peace. Now, there's lots of different opinions and so forth. But ultimately, uh, one of the things that we saw, which really resonates with me. I don't know about you. Maybe you had a different favorite one amongst that list was that this is the seal. We had all 15 of these words, and this is the final one, closing it off, sealing it up for us. And so, of course, then we get to see all these different drafts showed, all these different, I don't know, um, sort of really, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to say belaboring, but like really talking it up. Talking about peace. Peace is really deeply significant in our tradition. And I only gave part of that, but the rabbis love talking about how great peace is. Peace is really important. And ultimately, that's uh, why this blessing gets sealed off with peace. So hopefully that, hopefully this is helpful, providing some insights into this priestly blessing that has been a part of our tradition for, for millennia. And even what we get to see from the second or third century uh, rabbinic understandings of trying to, to delve more deeply into each of the different terms and pieces of the blessing. So I hope this was insightful and I wanna bless everybody and thank you so much for watching and Shabbat Shalom.